Mense praat altijd, dat is of hulle my story ken. Everything recording? I have this weird relationship with the movie Interstellar. The first time I watched it, I loved it. But after the second time, I noticed some things that I really didn't like. Cheesy dialogue, that kind of thing. Love is the one thing we're capable of perceiving that transcends dimensions of time and space. But to this day, I will go back and revisit Interstellar. And it's just one thing that keeps me coming back. The scene with Matthew McConaughey. And today I'm the age you were when you left. That scene just wrecks me. I watched the whole movie again, wade through all the crap just to get to that scene. I think there's a similar thing going on with Ellen, in a weird way. Let me explain. To be honest, I really didn't want to watch this movie. I figured I had it pegged from the get-go. This is gonna be one of those Oscar bait style historical biopics, and I hate those. I couldn't remember the whole thing with Ellen Buckies either. You know, I, I recognize the name, I just, uh, yeah, I'm a bad South African. <laughs> Before I went into the movie, I'd missed dinner. I hadn't slept well. I had this huge sinus headache from all the dry weather, which peaks right as I get into the cinema. What I'm saying is, I could not have been in a worse mood going in to see this movie. The first half an hour or so of Ellen did not do much to improve my mood. It was mostly two things that just really bugged me. Uh, first off is the cinematography that seemed as though it was left in the sole authorship of an events videographer looking to branch out from weddings and corporate summits. And something that was going on with the direction, the director is a guy named Darren Joshua, who seems like he was doing his worst impression of whichever director did the last Oscar-nominated historical biopic. And he's doing this impression by filling each scene with these long pauses to create the illusion of, I don't know, tension. Needless to say, it's a pretty dull experience until this scene comes along. Ellen and her husband, Odniel, have locked their drug-addicted son outside for the evening. He's had to sleep on the street, basically. The next morning, after Odniel, the husband, has left for work, the son forces his way back into the house so that he can steal stuff from his parents right in front of his own mother so that he can sell it and buy drugs. Obviously she's not having any of it, she fights him on it, and it just gets so ugly. And it's such a long and, and brutal scene, and it ends with Ellen, who's locked herself in a bathroom, and A.B., her son, is sitting outside, and he just, in this weird moment of clarity, starts apologizing for, well, trying to stab her a moment before. The scene tears me wide open. It is so much better than anything coming before it could have suggested, and it just caught me completely off guard tears and snot everywhere and my headache is gone and my perspective has changed. From here on out, for whatever reason, I'm just suddenly, I'm on board with it. There's actually a couple of good scenes after that and it feels like it elevated the whole movie, at least the second half of the movie. It might just be that the true story this is based on is just so shocking and so disturbing that you just can't help but be moved but I feel like at least some credit is due to the filmmakers here. I think credit is due especially to the screenwriter because as the film goes on, I realize how much information has been hidden and very purposefully drip fed throughout the movie. The English bits of the dialogue are pretty terrible. They have this ring of Hollywood imitation. This takes gonna make an example out of you. You're looking at 20 years. I can win this case, but you have to trust me. But thankfully, most of the movie is in a much richer, much more authentic Afrikaans that's very unique to that part of Cape Town. Jill Levenberg, playing Ellen Pakis, has moments that rubbed me the wrong way. Um, I think it might just be some old habits from soap acting, but I did feel like at certain points she was really overshooting. She was trying, I think, to, to make sure that nobody in the audience would miss the expression she was making. This is especially clear in the prison scenes. 
uh, cuts to her in jail, and it keeps cutting back to that those scenes throughout the movie, and it really puts a dampen on the overall uh, the overall performance. However, I don't feel like these are really definitive. I feel like she still betrays like a very intimate connection to this character. And she has these moments that are really great. There's a lot of scenes that could have been milked for the big emotions, but she doesn't do that. She sort of saves it. And boy, when she goes big, she goes big. Jared Hadilt, who plays Ellen's son, A.B. Pakis, also has these little moments of awkward or forced performance. But then he has these really long scenes where he's just so on the mark that it just knocks you out. I think it's actually the mother-son chemistry that he has with Jill Levenberg. For some reason, both of these actors just end up being so much better in the scenes that they have together. I, something is going on there. There's some kind of magic happening. So I had a nice little foundation of who he was, but that wasn't enough for me. So I decided, okay, cool. I got one, you know, foundation of who he was, one part of his personality. And then I said, you know what, I want to spend some time with Auntie Ellen and Odd Neil, who's Auntie Ellen's... Um... Elton Landrew playing Odd Neil, Ellen's husband, he's, he's okay too, um, but he gets this look on his face sometimes. Like there's some wheels turning that shouldn't be turning. I think he's either trying to remember his lines or just wondering what to do next. There's just some kind of uncertainty there. And it happens every single time there's one of those scenes with those long pauses that I mentioned earlier. He just, it's just, a, I think maybe a lack of confidence in those moments or something. He just like, he, he doesn't know where to, should I sit, you know, it's weird. But when he gets going, he's, he's pretty convincing. Um, he doesn't swing too big, you know. Uh, it's a very safe performance, but I'll try to be charitable. Maybe it was just better for the character. Even as things are getting better, my headache is clearing up, my perspective is changing, uh, my complaints are still there. I wish that the cinematography and the sound design had let me just soak in the environment a little bit more, because this place that they live, this feels like a really crucial element of the story that's just kind of being cut out of the frame. That pong of Hollywood imitation really saps the authenticity out of the scene sometimes. There's an oversupply of these Instagram-inspired uh, back of the head shots, which I think came off a lot less artsy than they intended. Just some weird creative decisions is what I'm trying to get at here. There's a very distinct lack of intention, especially in, in the direction. I don't think there's a lack of intention in the screenplay. I feel like it's seeped in through the, the filming process. Although I have to mention the story structure, uh, the way that they cut back and forward in time around this really shocking event is suspiciously similar to Sink, which is a hell of a South African movie that came out a few years ago. I can't forget to mention the music. <laughs> this drum can literally change the way your brain functions. The music is just the pits. It is the worst score. I mean, sometimes it is just straight up the wrong emotion. There's a scene where Ellen is in jail. She's being processed for the murder of her son. So it's clearly a very dark scene, but the music feels like it's going for inspiring. Like it's the pursuit of happiness. Like what the fuck? <laughs> Besides that, even when the music is okay, uh, there's just too much of it. Like I kept thinking, how much better some of these scenes would have been if they had just taken out the music. If they hadn't changed anything else, just take out the music and let us listen to the characters, how much better those scenes would have been. It's just horrible. For all that lets you down in the first half, it's worth it for those few good scenes later on. So I guess you could say Ellen won me over in the end. It's mostly rubbish, but it's rubbish that I, I might actually sit through again just to get to those, those few good scenes.